Today we're taking a look at Zite.com. Zite is essentially the brainchild of Dominic White, the guy behind Fillout. Now, Fillout is uh, one of those products that has revolutionized the uh, form builder area of the market. Things like type form, drop form, all of that kind of stuff. Fillout came in and really changed the game. This new product is by the same team. I really have gotten to know it up close in the last 24 hours. And I must admit, I have a lot of thoughts. Let's jump into it. Zeit has launched somewhat recently. It's been a few months. It's not a beta product per se anymore. You can log in, you can get started. There is even a paid plan. But honestly, the website is kind of lacking. There's no indication of UX UI. There's not much going on. You might argue that it's minimal, but I don't think it's minimal. I think it's not helpful. They're giving us some ideas about what's possible. However, there's no indication of UX UI. Having spent 24 hours with the product, there is a reason why. Believe me, there's so much to say. This is basically it in terms of the, the website. There's not much. Guys, there's so many more ways of doing a clean website. For instance, here's T-Ball, right? Okay, they do show us a bunch of the UI stuff, but there's a clear indication of this is what we can do for you. And it's not just like, oh, here's a chat. Let's begin doing stuff. You know, give us some examples. I've just logged in into Zite and this is what you see. Make a Zite. Build production ready business apps with AI. Great, but what if I don't? <laughs> like, what if I don't want to? Is there any way to just start? Basically, Zite kind of promises the fact that you can get vibe coding blended with no coding. And I would say that no code is almost like a precursor to vibe coding. And not only that, I would say that fill out the parent product almost, of Zite, it was a product built by no-coders for no-coders. Here, there's no way to kind of like escape vibe coding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up Zite website that I created yesterday. As you can see, required to sign in, and this is because there are some settings for this, but all you really have to do is when you create a new Zite, you have to jump in and connect your database. Over here, you can select an existing database or create a new database actually over here i believe you can click here and then if you're using airtable for example or google sheets or something like that you can click airtable you already i already have a connection press next and then you should be able to choose which base you want to use but the thing is even if you choose it, if you press save, you still have to kind of give a description of what you're trying to build. And this is a recurring thing. You have to describe stuff very often, even at the very, 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 very beginning of your app. Now, once you've connected your Airtable database, you will then jump into the actual app and I'll share my first conversation with Zite. As you can see, all I did basically was to say, using my Airtable database, please create a custom CRM. And it did, it did. I was actually very surprised with how much stuff I was able to get with that initial conversation. However, you have to wait a very long time between every single request. Overall, I would say that the UI of this looks good. Let's jump into the next section and I'll explain in detail what my experience has been like and what I think Zite is for and definitely what it's not for <laughs> or who it's not for. We have to get into the deep end because this is a freemium product. It's not in beta. You can sign up and you can also get on a paid plan. The key thing that at least bothers me is that there are no views. In other platforms such as low-code platforms, such as no low code, stacker, app sheets, all of these beautiful platforms, software, you have ready-made views. You have list views, you have detail views, you have calendars, you have Gantt views, you have all of these kinds of preset views that you map or align rather your data with the requirements of said view and voila, you have it. In Zite, there's no such thing. You have to describe your view. You have to describe what you want at 
all times. It gets kind of worse because, for instance, even with like filters, I can't just jump in to edit and say, oh, you know what, let's add an extra filter. There's no way for me to just quickly say, you know what, I want to filter by the date and time of that interaction. No such thing. What do you have to do? You have to ask, please add a filter for the date and time of the interactions table. You press enter and you have to wait. Doing this in all the previously mentioned platforms would have been a couple of clicks. But here you have to describe it. You have to think about how to describe it. Wait for it and it should appear here. Hey, here we go. Now there are other omissions. Let's say I wanna do like a preview of the responsive design of my app. It's all well and good if you are previewing like you know, laptops or bigger screens, but as soon as you go into smaller screens like phones, etc., there's literally no hamburger menu. How how can I click out and go somewhere else? You can't. Most likely you will have to use AI for that. Having said that, by now you probably are thinking, well, uh, Zeit equals shite. Not so fast. I think I've cracked really the reason why Zeit is a good thing to keep on your radar. The cool thing about Zeit is that you can actually create custom functionality, custom components or custom behaviors. For instance, what I want to do is let's say make this filter box smaller please make my filter box in interactions collapsible it's currently taking too much space we have to wait so about a minute later we can now collapse our filters. How freaking cool is that? Most important takeaway here, asking for something like this from some of our no-code, the aforementioned no-code uh, builders would have been preposterous. I mean, not preposterous, you could ask it, they will put it on the roadmap and at some point they will, you know, release that feature to collapse or uh, uncollapse your filters. I've even tried a few crazier things. So for instance, in my opportunities, I can save an opportunity. You can save a setup of, of a view. You can save this view, closed, save view, and there you go. If you want it, you have it. So we can go all statuses. Oh, I want to see the closed very quickly. It's up there, almost like a tab. That sort of thing is amazing. And I honestly hoped that we would have a lot more no code stuff, but this feature alone, chef's kiss. The fact that we can describe those custom features that we want and have them within minutes versus months, that's insane. I want to talk about the next couple of things that we usually kind of focus on during these reviews, and that is fields. Generally speaking, you can have all the fields that you have in your database. Don't ask me how you can normalize other things other than Airtable. I haven't checked it out in the last 24 hours, but in case you're interested in Airtable, you can have all your Airtable fields and that's all well and good. You can also have custom fields. So for instance, this field over here in my opportunities, and by the way, I kind of forgot to mention is that you don't even get detail views out of the box. So for instance, here I am, I have my list of opportunities and maybe we can check this out with interactions. In fact, you have your interactions. I'm clicking on an interaction, nothing happens. You have to ask AI to create a detail view for you. Gladly, I've already done this for opportunities. You can click on an opportunity and here we have a virtual field, a field that doesn't exist in my Airtable database. So, so if we jump into our opportunities, you'll see that there is no field called days between proposal. So basically it calculates the amount of days between these two dates. So that's a really nice, cool, nifty feature that can help you keep a very clean version of your Airtable while helping out the users who are using your uh, front end. The other thing that we usually talk about in these kinds of reviews is users. How do we manage user access? Sadly, there's no in-depth user access. All in all, you can't for now get your list of users to connect from Airtable like we can with, I believe, pretty much every front end 
for Airtable at this point. You know, you can sync up your user list from Airtable, from like a table within Airtable and manage those users list from Airtable. It's not the case. You can add new users, you can add multiple users, but basically you need their emails and they're like comma separated and all of that. So this is very, very basic. And at least for me, it's a no-go just on the premise on the fact that we can't have more granular control over the roles of these users just like you would with a custom crm you know i want a sales manager to have his specific set of views a sales rep director and so forth i kind of tried to set this up but it didn't really work hallucinated in fact a little bit but if you just have an arbitrary list of users that you need to throw in there more power to you Let's talk a little bit about the automations because we do tend to check this out and most other low code, no code platforms do have some kind of embedded automation system, kind of like a, you know, basic Zapier sort of thing. You say that something happens in my CRM, my app, then something else happens somewhere else, like in Slack or something like this. Zai does advertise all of this. You can also see that we have workflows here. However, there's no low code way to add them unless I'm a little bit dumb and that ha does happen, but I can't see them. I do see some of the workflows in here, but those are the workflows that technically get created when you build your UX UI. So it's a little bit confusing as to why these workflows exist. I mean, you can also kind of edit them. Okay, fine. However, there's no simple clear way to do it unless you talk to AI. The other side of this, in my experience in the last 24 hours, as I was kind of talking to it, asking it to do certain things, it would hallucinate and I would wait for it to do its thing. I would realize that it's hallucinated. I would ask again and ultimately you end up losing so much time and patience that you kind of give up. It can do workflows. It can do automations. Good luck. I wonder how that will go. In conclusion, what do I think after 24 hours of using Zite? I would say that if it takes so long to build something so, so basic, like a four table custom app with like minimum amounts of fields and minimum complexity, I would say that for now, I would stick to no code, pure no code, where we have any kind of different view, sort of calendar view, Gantt view, form view, all of these different tools available to us at a click of a button and you can be up and running with an app like this within half an hour because you can and you'll be live here you know it's not really the case because you have to hammer at the keyboard constantly wait for it and hope for the best and if it doesn't work well you basically have to go back and hammer again now all this is to say that i really hope zeit really 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 picks up speed just like the guys did with fill out back in the day fill out didn't begin as this sort of godsend form builder it became that over a course of a few years. And I'm sure that Zite will get there. But for now, it's cool. It's okay. It's good to have it on your radar if you're a no coder, if you run an agency just like we do. Still missing a bunch of different things. I would like to hear your opinion. Um, what do you think of Zite? Let me know down in the comments and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.